There is radon in this house. Currently we are at 4.5 in the living room. I am at my wits end. I'm going crazy. What do you do when you don't have control over a situation, but the person who does won't do anything about it? Basically we're renting. This is an old house built in the late 1800s. You know, that's a cool thing, right? It's cool, but you gotta take care of it, right? Would you like to come into the cellar with me and see the state of things and how our landlord takes care of things? I don't think you do, but I'm gonna take you down there anyways because it is crazy in my opinion. We recently got a very expensive air quality monitor because it's, things have gotten bad and we just are like, we need to know. We need to know what's going on. You know, it takes some time to calibrate. We're about halfway through the calibrations, but already, we are seeing a lot of stuff going on. There's so much more to this story. I don't know where to begin. I'm just going crazy. I need to do something about it and I can't. So hence this video. I know. It's scary down here. I need people to witness it, right? I need either validation or I need to be told that I'm being a wuss. Oh. Very scary, very trepidatious to work my way down here. Wish me luck, here we go. Oh yeah, you see this stick here? You're wondering why that stick is here? I wondered that too. You wanna see what it's supporting? Sure, no problem. Remember, you asked for it. Okay. Here's where it starts. Okay. There we go. There we go, guys. There we go. That is why this stick is here. This is what it is supporting. Okay. <laughs> Holy spider webs. <sighs> so, apparently, the radon would be like, since it's 4.5 up in the living room. Does that mean the radon is like 16 down here? Why are these rags all over here? It's just spider webs. That is disgusting. Okay. The biggest thing that I can't stand about this is this situation. This describes our landlord to a T. This old man, you know, he seems well-meaning. He's nice, he is. But this is like how he fixes things. <sighs> yeah, and it's like we can't do anything without asking. And then um, and then he gets involved and then it's, <coughs> then it's like this. <clears throat> and I don't feel so good. This is where my husband goes, to, he crawls through here to the back and changes the filters back there. He's very good about that. You can see, oh, lovely. Look at some of these old filters. Yeah. I feel like I probably shouldn't stay down here all that long, but I, I just wanted to show this. Is this bad? You gotta tell me, cause I don't have much experience with uh, like viewing house sellers and stuff like that. Is this bad? Is this stick bad? I think this stick is ridiculous. That's the one that trips me up so madly. <laughs> Seriously. This feels like the stuff from horror movies. I'm gonna get like eaten by a giant spider. <sighs> you gonna come down here? I don't blame you for not wanting to. That was the cellar. Another part of the story. The heat stopped working. You know what? I'll, I'll bring you to another location to tell the story. I'm like, collect my thoughts. I'm a bit shaky right now. There we go. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Holy frijoles. I got some big hair today. <laughs> a couple of videos ago, I talked about my standing desk and how that's been really helping me at work because I work from home. Standing desk makes everything so much better. Then it got cold. We had to close up and turn on the heat. 
closing up was like not horrible but turning on the heat with the furnace heat uh yeah it is bad and it brought back this horrible smell that we had been getting last year really really bad smell i didn't know what it was i always thought it was our stinky neighbor joe um <laughs> we would always call the smell stinky joe's fart palace um <laughs> i don't i don't know and then we then we started thinking maybe it's like mice living in the vents way down there and it's just blowing up i don't know so point being it was a horrible smell and i was stuck in there all day or still am stuck in there all day just being in that horrible smell not knowing what it is okay there's the owner of the house the renting group uh that is in charge of it too that the owner goes through contacted them about it because we actually ended up buying an endoscope so that we could fish it down the vents and see what's going on because it got that bad we're like what the heck and it's just filled with dust and like dead bug skeletons that's that's what we've seen so far we contacted our rental agency and and we asked hey can we are we allowed to like hire professionals to clean out these vents we think that would really help basically it's almost unlivable in here right now and they're like oh actually we cover it and we go, we know a guy and we'll have him call you i was like that's awesome hallelujah never heard from the guy and <laughs> Uh, so that's been like i don't know a month now or getting close to a month haven't heard anything okay so that's that situation and then oh and here's my point with the standing desk okay as soon as we closed up and the heat turned on i started getting really dizzy spells like i don't know i don't know if i'd say dizzy or it was like motion sickness so i'd be standing up at my desk and then I would, I would like feel like everything is moving. And I was like, oh my word, I, I have to sit down. I, I'm gonna like fall over. And I've tried standing multiple times since then. And each time I start getting really dizzy. And I also know it's not just because of my computer setup because when I'm standing and washing dishes, sometimes I feel that way as well. Also in the shower and nothing's changed. Like I'm, you know, I'm not locking my knees or anything like that. Nothing's changed except we turned the heat on and closed up everything. <sighs> okay, so that's another situation. And then maybe two weeks ago, the heat stopped working. My husband and I actually did not notice it because we like the cold. <laughs> and we were like, um, so one, one morning we realized, hey, it's blowing. The vents are blowing, but there's is cold air <laughs> like oh so we asked my neighbor stinky joe they're like oh we just noticed this morning that is the heat's not working it's just blowing out cold air he's like yeah it's been blowing out cold air for days I'm like well why didn't you say anything because we're the ones who control the heat because it's in our cellar and so we control it for him too which is unfortunate because he's always freezing and we like it cold but we also bought him a heater and whatnot, you know. Um, but yeah, so anyways, like he should have told us. Because <laughs> he's like freezing his bonkers over there and we had no idea. <laughs> so on one hand, it's like, oh dang, it's like November and the heat's not working. But it was kind of nice. I was like, oh, there's no smell. The smell's gone. It's so wonderful. The heat's not working and I don't have to smell that horrible whatever smell. We went out and bought a space heater and had that running and and they're like oh shoot we better you know tell somebody so we ended up telling the actual owner of the house yeah he didn't do anything about it until like four or five days later which was fine with me personally i was very grateful for the reprieve from the smell then they come they go down there it's a it's like a part missing you know where like so that the valve so that the gas can be accessible and so the guy replaced that and the heat started working. However, this is where more things happened. Okay, so that was a that was Friday. I started I was at work in the house. I have to go to the bathroom, you know, like humans do. Clocked out so I could go to the bathroom. Check my phone and my husband's texting me saying, "Oh, I'm getting taken to the ER." Yeah. Yeah, this is so, there's been so much going on. Two Fridays ago, he went to urgent care. He's been having issues. 
and it's always around this time of year at this house. We, this is our third year at this place. He went to urgent care two Fridays ago. You know, they're like, nothing's wrong with you. You are in, your heart's perfect. Your blood's perfect. Whatever. Then it was this, um, whatever day it was. His coworker, they thought he was almost going to die. Brought him to the ER. I saw that text like 30 minutes later. Like, <sighs> My husband had the car at his job. So what I had to do is instead of instead of ubering straight to the hospital i had to uber to the car you know just in case whatever so that we would have the car uber to the car where his job is uber to or the and then drive to the hospital not knowing what like if he was like alive or what <sighs> don't need to go into the details cuz that's personal but point is they're like nothing's wrong so frustrating, you know, they're like, they put on, they give him a Holter monitor, be like, hey, try to make the episode happen again over the weekend. And just like, that's your, they just want to record the episode, you know, so that they can actually try to see what's going on. But it's like, he, that like almost killed him the last time. So sure, let's just have that happen again. Here comes my neighbor again. This happens every time I come out here and film. So basically, that was the hospital's plan. Try to almost die again. Then we can record it and see what happens. So the next day, he obviously stayed home and was working from... He actually was working, working from home. And basically, it's, I'm like freaking out. Like, what's... Because he was getting bad again. He, he was getting close to another episode. And he's basically like, get prepared to <laughs> do CPR. I, there I, I'm watching YouTube videos on how to do CPR. You know, I got trained like, what, a decade ago for some job I had. I haven't looked at that since. So there I am trying to study up on how to do CPR in case I have to perform that on my husband. Which the hospital's hoping will happen. <sighs> also, I'm trying to like get ready to clock in for my job. So it's like, oh, okay, great. Okay, honey. Well, if you if you start dying, just walk into the living room and lay down and I'll get ready to do CPR. That's the point we were at, you know, making a plan for that. And, you know, I'm sorry for this crazy energy I have going on. And it's very stressful sounding. I can, I'm sure that's not enjoyable to listen to. I'm sorry. But this has been a very, very long week of frustration. No answers. Scared my husband's gonna die. Okay, back to the point about radon, though. Okay, so the heat starts working, you know, they, okay, yeah, they fix the heat. We were in the hospital all day, we come back, and, you know, the heat's working, and the house stinks like the horrible smell again, okay? Whatever. We had bigger things on our mind at the time. I can't remember, I don't know. And then the heat starts working, the radon levels start climbing. That's the point of this whole thing. The heat starts working, the radon starts climbing. Higher and higher. We did notice the particulate number went down because we stopped using the space heaters. So it seemed like the space heaters are really bad actually, even though it's preferable to horrible smell coming out of the vents. Uh, it seems like space heaters do a lot of damage with the particulate index, whatever you want to call it. And then here's this morning and we were like, I think the heat stopped working again. <laughs> Last night, it was really bad. Like, the house, it was so bad, you know. We closed our bedroom door, you know. We have this huge filter, homemade filter that my husband made, and we use it all the time. But seriously, you can look at this. Look at this. Um, this is from the app that is connected to the air monitor, the air quality monitor. You can exactly see when the heat started turning on. Look at this spike with the radon levels. Like, you can't deny this proof. Guess when the heat started working. So we got really concerned about this this morning because we we're like, dang, my husband got the alert on his phone, on his app saying, you're in, in unhealthy air. You got to do something about this. He started looking up uh, symptoms of being affected by high radon levels, shortness of breath, tight chest, all the stuff, you know, it's all that stuff where you think it's like a heart attack or something, but, but it's what he's been experiencing. And it's like, maybe this is what's going on thankfully 
we've made the step we um are month to month now we're paying a, the premium price to be month by month um and not be locked into a lease like that and i want to you know i've been pushing to move for years <laughs> But it's always like, oh, basically we hate where we are and getting locked into another lease at some other place that is even more corporate-y, you know, like an apartment complex is a nightmare as well. But we've got to start making, we got to do something because this is seriously detrimental to our health. You know, I've been getting dizzy. I have tight throat all the time now. It's like... I struggle with the breathing. I have like con like something in my lungs. I can feel it, but it's nowhere near as bad as my husband. This is the second time he's been to the ER in less than a year to do with these same kind of situations. We just got to get out, right? We got to get out. I don't know. I don't know what to do because it's this area. There's so much radon in this area. So it's like, Will every house be like this? You got to make sure every house is tested or whatever. I don't know what to do. We're going crazy because it's like so many different things we're dealing with. And then there's no for sure answers. We have so many theories, you know, like we have this radon theory. But is it accurate? I have no idea. We had other theories. So we've been under so much stress for a long time. I'm tired of worrying if my husband's going to die. He's like the pinnacle of health. If you look at his numbers, his heart, his his blood work, they're all saying he's like perfect. And then all this is happening. Our landlord, this old dude, I'm worried he's not going to do anything once we tell him. Or it's like, what if he already knew and he just, you know, didn't disclose this to us. And we've been here for three years just living in it. I don't know. It's very freaky. The The levels are like equivalent to what smoking 10 cigarettes a day or something to the impact on your lungs. <sighs> Our plan was to break free from here a long time ago, but we don't. The problem is always having mobile income, being able to bring our income with us because we've learned the hard way that if you can't bring your income with you, you're going to just suffer more in the long run because it's going to be like a short lived little fun adventure. You know, like we did with van life and then you're going to have to like go to the city and work and it's just never it's never sustainable and it's doesn't work. So we've been trying to get to the point where we can be financially mobile and we keep getting locked in leases. We made it through a whole nother lease and then we were able to do month to month. And if we leave now, we're going to get locked into another lease and we're not ready to just go off and do the van or whatever, you know. So I don't know what to do. All right. Thanks for listening to my rant. Thanks for letting me vent and get this out. Vent, no pun intended. If you've had a similar experience and have learned the hard way from something, I would love to get some of your knowledge and wisdom. All right. I'm going to go. Sorry for freaking out. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. You know, just to wrap up, I guess all this, this experience has been a reevaluating of life you know life can be so short and getting stuck in this kind of pointlessness of just working for just <laughs> yeah just don't forget that life is short no matter what age you are and nothing is guaranteed so let's um let's make the most of it